Uh, morning to everybody. And again, um, as you'll see as I read uh, my notes, uh, I sincerely thank all of you uh, for covering this story so extensively as you have. Uh, not only every man and woman who works for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, uh, but every community member here in Palmdale. So I want to start off by saying 36 hours after the murder of our deputy, the men and women of our department arrested him early this morning. I'm very proud, very proud of the work that our men and women have done. Uh, you'll see as I lay this out, uh, their professionalism, uh, their dedication, their discipline, uh, just absolutely off the charts and shows just what an amazing department the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department is. Yesterday, after 4 p.m., we had a press conference at that time. Many of you were here. Community, community members came forward with information which led homicide detectives to identify the suspect and the vehicle used in the murder of Deputy Klink and Broomer. Early this morning, our Special Enforcement Bureau served a warrant at the suspect's residence located in the 37 600,000 block of Burrison Street here in the city of Palmdale. During that operation, deputies surrounded the residence and called out all the occupants of the, that residence. Eventually, family members did come out. The suspect chose to barricade himself and refused to initially come out. He barricaded himself for several hours. Our special enforcement deputies, our, basically our SWAT team, uh, were out there for several hours uh, trying to de-escalate the situation, uh, using different techniques, including using hostage negotiators. Eventually, they were deployed, or they deployed chemical agents, and the suspect ultimately surrendered. And I want to take a pause here for a second when I talk about how proud I am of this department after a significant tragedy that we've shared with all of you, because those special enforcement deputies took the time to try to de-escalate this and take this individual peacefully into custody when they knew that our deputy was not afforded the same opportunity. He never gave our deputy a chance, but yet our men and women gave this individual a chance to take him into custody peacefully. That's the difference between professionals and individuals out there who are targeting uh, not only community members, but more importantly, law enforcement out on the street. Investigators recovered numerous firearms and the vehicle of interest that was depicted in the flyer that we put out yesterday at our press conference. I want to stress that, investigator, that our investigators are still actively working this case. There's more information that we probably don't know at this time every piece of evidence, everything we have will be analyzed. And I do want to stress to our community that although we are extremely confident that we have the right person in custody, I am still asking people to come forward and give us any piece of information that they believe that they have. Why? Because the arrest is only one part of this. We have to get this individual prosecuted now to the full extent of the law. And we need the public's continued help and support in doing that. The suspect was arrested and transported here to the Palmdale Sheriff's Station pending further investigation. The suspect has been identified as 29-year-old 29, 29 Kevin Catiano Salazar of Palmdale. I would also like to emphasize that Ryan's partners 
the deputies that serve this community here out of the Palmdale Sheriff Station were involved in this investigation uh, leading to the arrest of this suspect. And we believe at this time there are no other suspects involved in this incident. Homicide investigators will be presenting this case to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office for their filing consideration. I have personally spoken to the district attorney this morning, and he, he assures me that they will aggressively pursue this case based on the factors that you know of today. I want to take a second to thank our community members here in Palmdale. You have been with us from the very beginning. And honestly, based on our pleas yesterday, we wouldn't be here today announcing the arrest if it wasn't for courageous community members who came forward and were so offended by what happened, they had to do something about it. I thank them. I thank them. The entire Antelope Valley community assistance played in an instrumental role in gleaning information leading to the identification of the suspect. And again, we're extremely grateful. But here's the thing. The arrest, the work that still needs to be done for the prosecution is only part of this. Uh, I ask all of you, specifically out here in the Antelope Valley, to continue to support our deputies here at the Palmdale Station, Lancaster Station right next door, and really all of law enforcement. I think this taught a lot of people a lot of valuable lessons. For our deputy left this station in uniform to serve, and he was shot and killed. Why? We don't know yet, but we intend to find out. But at the end of the day, he was in a marked black and white right here in front of the station, and he was murdered, ambushed by a coward. Our officers, our deputies go out and serve this community every day, putting their lives on the line. So we have a lot to be thankful for that we have men and women who volunteered to do this, and families who kiss them goodbye and just pray that they come back home. And in this case, Ryan's family will never see him again. Excuse me. I want to thank our homicide investigators who worked tirelessly, tirelessly to coordinate many detective division team members throughout the duration of this investigation. We told you all uh, we left nothing on the shelf. Uh, all of our resources were entirely committed uh, for this investigation. And as I stated earlier, 36 hours later, with the help of our community, in, in, in collaboration with our community, we have the person that we believe is responsible for the tragic murder of Ryan. I also want to thank the city of Palmdale, the city of Lancaster, um, Supervisor Catherine Barger, who has been with us from the very beginning and, as you know, offered a significant amount of the uh, reward along with our officials from Palmdale. And like I said yesterday, we had many others offering rewards. Uh, it was a $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars that tells you how much love, respect, and support we have in our community for our deputies. And we had thousands other coming in and in reserve ready to roll that out if we needed to. I also want to thank uh, ALADS uh, and they, the president who's going to be speaking today uh, for their support from the very beginning and every local, state, and federal partner who called and offered their assistance. Uh, the uh, director, Ray, uh, just called me before coming up here, um, and the governor, the attorney general, it just goes on and on. And I know there's many people standing behind me, but I want to acknowledge uh, FBI Assistant Director Don Elway from the FBI, who has been supportive from the, the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to next read a statement from the family. 
before I start reading the statement, though, uh, I want to emphasize to our partners in the media, uh, you are partners. We wouldn't be here announcing this arrest if it wasn't for your assistance. But I respectfully ask that you give the family privacy. Uh, they have asked for it. Uh, we have had people trying to contact them at home. Uh, they need privacy. They need time to grieve. And they're grieving. This is a statement from the family. Our son Ryan was a dedicated, hardworking deputy sheriff who enjoyed working here at the Palmdale Station. He was proud to work along the side of his partners that he considered brothers and sisters as he sacrificed daily to better the community that he served. Ryan made the ultimate sacrifice in doing so. Ryan was recently engaged to the love of his life. As our firstborn son, Ryan will be greatly missed by his family, friends, and the Sheriff's Department as a whole. Please keep Ryan's family, friends, and colleagues in your prayers and respect everyone's privacy during our time of mourning. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, the Klika Rumor family. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to the next speaker, uh, our supervisor, who I thank a whole lot for her support. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Luna. And what I will say is what a difference a day makes. First off, I want to congratulate the Sheriff's Department team for apprehending a person of interest quickly. We have the best and the brightest working. And last night I had the honor of meeting some of them and I knew they were going to catch the suspect. They did the job quickly and they did the job well. This is proof positive that LA County has the finest men and women working, not only within homicide, but the rank and file. And so I want to personally thank each and every one of them. I know many have been up here covering from other stations to support their brothers and sisters. Ryan's loved ones in the community at large demand and now deserve answers. Why was Deputy Klinkenbrummer murdered? Klinkenbrummer murdered. Why, who was involved? And what is their background? I am determined to obtain those questions quickly, as are our law enforcement partners and supporters who won't rest until we get the answers we deserve. Crimes like this, though, don't happen in a vacuum. We need to have a full picture of what motivated the murder and why this shooting transpired. I want Ryan's killer to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, and I'm really happy to hear that the DA is committed to upholding the law on the books. You have my word that I will not rest until that happens. We need to send a clear message that this type of cowardly attack is not going to be tolerated, not here in the Antelope Valley, nowhere in LA County, quite frankly, nowhere in California, and it shouldn't be anywhere in this nation. This was an attack on the law enforcement community, an attack on public safety, an attack on law-abiding residents of Los Angeles County who believe in and support law and order. We must send a clear message that our LA community is united against this and we will not stand for this. Again, I commend SEB, I commend the homicide investigators that worked on this, and the men and women who each and every day sacrifice so that we can be safe in our communities. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce the mayor of Palmdale. Good, good morning. Um, God bless the men and women of the LASD who brought this situation to such a, a quick conclusion. There's still a lot more to be done. These things take time because they have to be done and they have to be done right. Thank you to the media for covering this and giving us all, all the national attention. I've seen it on the national news. And thank you to the community, um, everyone that was here last night, 
After the vigil, a lot of calls came in from the community, united in finding out what happened and united in finding the suspect. So thank you to everyone. And on behalf of the city of Palmdale, it's great that we can collectively breathe a sigh of relief that our city is safer and this, the entire Anilt Valley is safer that the, now that this person is off the street. So thank you all very much. I'd like now to uh, introduce our last speaker, which is uh, ALADS President Rich Pippin. Thank you, Sheriff Luna. Um, I'd just like to take an opportunity to tell all of you that every day I'm proud to be Los Angeles County Deputy Sheriff. I'm especially proud today. I'm proud of my partners, the men and women in this department for their professionalism, the skill they showed. What they did here was amazing. To gather this information, identify and locate a suspect this quickly, but perhaps most impressively, to take him into custody without any further harm to anyone, without any further loss of life. It speaks volumes to the kind of people we have here protecting our communities, working for the Sheriff's Department. You will not find a department with a higher level of professionalism than the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. In spite of the fact that we don't have some of the resources and funding that some departments do, our men and women are our greatest asset, and they showed that, I think, out, out here over the last couple of days. Um, I think all of you, in spite of what the critics might say, should feel very comfortable knowing that you have these kind of people protecting your communities. We now wait for George Gascon, the district attorney. We expect that he'll do what he assured Sheriff Looney he would do and make sure that this does not happen to another family. As for the Clink and Broomer family, as you heard, they're still mourning. We're grieving with them. Please, thank you for all the support, the kind thoughts, condolences. Please keep them in your thoughts and prayers and continue to support them at this difficult time. Thank you. I will now uh, take your questions. It's an excellent question, and I think everybody here wants to know the answer to that. The investigation continues. I have no doubt that our homicide investigators will get to the bottom of why something that makes absolutely no sense occurred. Um, as I stated earlier, our deputy was in uniform in a marked black and white police vehicle right in front of the station. Why he did this, I have no idea. Was he targeted? I I'm assuming he was, uh, but we will, our intent is to find out. Thank you. O over here, please. His family is amazing, and, it, and you said it, uh, three generations. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting his grandfather who served, uh, rose to the, the rank of captain here at the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. His father retired as a lieutenant several years ago. Um, to listen to them with the pride they have, not only in this department, but this profession, and they were about service, and Ryan was no different than they were. Um, and, and, and I'm really hoping that we as a community learn to appreciate uh, how we get people who volunteer to do this job and put their lives, their physical harm and mental harm on the line every day, 24-7. Uh, even though we have people grieving, I've repeated this, they're still out there handling 911 calls. You have police officers and deputies doing this across the country. We share this information with them. Um, and it gets just a little harder for a family member to say, please be safe tonight, and I hope you come home. Sheriff, did the suspect confess? Our investigators continue their investigation. The interview process is all part of it. Uh, a lot of the detailed information that I know, they're all good questions. 
we probably will not share that level of detail until we get to court. Why? Not, it's not because we're trying to hide information. At the end of the day, our job is not complete until we get this individual prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And at the right time, uh, we will present the appropriate evidence uh, to make sure uh, he will never see the streets anywhere out here again. I don't know, again, that's all part of the investigation. Uh, we're gonna look at every angle. We're gonna work with the prosecutors. We'll work with everybody we have to as we move forward. Um, and, and whether mental health is a factor or not, think about this. If I had to go to your family and tell them that you were not coming home and you were just murdered, does it matter? what the person was thinking or their condition? Those are things that we're still looking at. We'll have answers for that later. Based on the debrief with our homicide detectives before coming out here, uh, I feel extremely confident that we have uh, the right person uh, in custody. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, let's go over here. We've had one arrest. That's a suspect I named. This is still a very fluid investigation. There could be other arrests, but for right now, we believe we have the murderer of our deputy in custody. Los otros, la investigación que todavía está pasando ahorita, pensamos los otros que sí él, este sospechoso es el que mató uh, al deputy de los otros. El motivo no lo sabemos todavía. Vamos, estamos investigando eso. I will say this, that I am very grateful to our community members uh, who were paying attention to the information that we were putting out, that all of you were helping us put out. And based on the information that we were uh, collectively putting out, including the flyer of the uh, vehicle of interest, uh, that was key at this point, uh, leading our detectives uh, to this suspect. Regarding this individual that's in custody, uh, not by him, but as I stated earlier, every person who dons this uniform on in this department and across the country, unfortunately, that is a reality. And the statistics prove it because we have had several deputies or police officers shot throughout the United States. I get daily notifications of tragic incidents of people who volunteer to serve their community who are attacked. Uh, is it something that is always on our mind? Absolutely. We train for it. Uh, we try to prepare for it. But honestly, we're human, and nothing prepares us specifically for what just happened the last several days. Uh, we did find several firearms. And uh, again, with all due respect, uh, as this goes on, uh, uh, I don't know if I'll clarify it before we get into court, uh, but we did recover firearms. Do you believe the suspect has been targeting any other members of law enforcement? Uh, that's still under investigation. Sheriff, has the suspect been in, involved in a road rage incident previously? That is part of our investigation, uh, whether it was part of it or not. Uh, again, uh, I, I cannot tell you how honored I am that our community members came forward uh, and we started piecing this puzzle together, but it's not over. I'm still asking people to come forward that may have been involved uh, with this vehicle uh, or this uh, suspect that we arrested. Sheriff, adding a question, did the suspect's family, did they know that he was involved in the shooting, and are they cooperating with 
We're still trying to determine the involvement of either family members or others, a homicide detectives. Again, this is very early on. We only arrested this individual several hours ago. We still will continue looking at every angle. Um, I'm uh, not going to answer that at this point. Thank you. I do not want to get into specifics on weapons or ballistics at this point. Again, we will take that to court and at the time we'll present the appropriate evidence. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, no. We're yet to determine that um, as to how that will work out. I'm just so grateful uh, that many of our elected officials step forward to offer a $250,000 reward. Uh, to me, these, that speaks volumes about their support uh, and us working together. Did that play into uh, this? I don't know yet. At the end of the day, I'm just happy to report that we took an extremely dangerous person off the street. Uh, he will no longer threaten our community. Uh, and no longer threaten any other, any of our deputies. Have I'll take one. Again, those are all excellent questions. We're looking at all that. Can you tell us what's next about the funeral? Those are all details that are still being worked out. Um, as you can imagine, uh, dealing uh, with our family as we're wrapping our arms around them, uh, trying to deal with the grief, but then trying to do whatever we can to honor our deputy uh, to the fullest extent that we can. All the details are still being worked out, and as soon as we get them, we'll be able to provide them. I'm going to go here in the center, over here. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm trying to understand your question. Uh, uh, what made you, what no, made him finally come out? No, I, I heard, yes, ma'am, I heard your question. I'm just trying to process it. Okay. Uh, I'm processing it because if, um, hypothetically, if we, wouldn't got, if we would have gotten there and in 15 minutes we would have had a uh, deadly confrontation with them, we'd be having a completely different conversation right now. So I, uh, I'm pausing. And I'm going back to the fact that we, as a department, our Special Enforcement Bureau deputies were so professional in giving the suspect adequate time to surrender peacefully. Uh, a lot of, t in many of these occasions, we're trying to de-escalate. Uh, the majority of our Special Enforcement Bureau callouts end peacefully. A lot of that determines uh, of the actions of the suspect. But I'm going to repeat this. Our deputies gave this suspect an opportunity to peacefully give up. That is not the right that was afforded to our deputy three days ago out here across the street. Sorry if I sound passionate, but I just sometimes don't understand. I, you got to ask questions. I respect that, but it's there's a balance to this. A, a balance, okay? With that, and thank you.